We don't know. We sing first. Set them down. I know. They like just like sing the room. I'll send in Macy after you. So I was like, what did you do? I was like, what did you do? She stood up right before she got to so I was just trying to keep her. Good morning, Calvary Chapel. How's everybody doing this morning? You know, in Scripture it says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. It's such a joy to be here. And there's joy in His house, amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet and give Him some praise this morning. lovely wife Christy to the stage please
Good morning, guys. Welcome. I'm Christy from Connection Point. If you do not know what that is, when you first walk through the doors, we are the desk that's right there. We have sign-up sheets there, information about any things going on at our church. If you have any questions, please come ask us, and we will do our best to answer your questions. Um, if this is your first time through our doors, can you please stand? stand? Anybody first time? We have a gift for you. Right here? Right here. Oh, yeah. See? Anybody else? Very first time, please stand up. Oh, we have Hyder over here. Do, do we have any first time people hey, who Jet, are right shy here. about standing up? Jet, right Is here. Is your first time here? Is it really? Right over here. Right here. We She's just want to give you a little welcome gift. Yeah. Anybody else? First time through the door. Oh, I see another finger over here. Jason's pointing you out. I'm oh, sorry. Just you raise, up, okay, right just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Macy, right there you there. go. See her? Guys, no. over here, anybody, she's we know anybody you're short, else. but you can see it right over there. Anybody else? Okay, well, also, I almost forgot about this. If this is your first time or you've never filled out this little connection card, if you can please fill it out and return it to Connection Point, we'd like to keep connected with you guys, and welcome, guys. All right, let's give our, our visitors a warm welcome. Good to have you all. Great to have you. So announcements, uh, don't forget family section is kind of that section back and uh, you're coming on your left hand side. You want to keep your little ones in the service, that's totally fine. We just ask that if they begin to make noise uh, during the worship or the word, you just pick them up, take them on out. Um, we have a nursing room right there. You can see the window, one way mirror there. And it's right, ladies, as you go out to your right because we have a lot of babies in the, in the fellowship now. Guys, if you need to have your little one, you're upstairs, and there's a room, designated room for you. You go up to the, stair, the stairs. At the top of the stairs, you turn right, and there's a room right there. You can even watch the service through there. Your little ones can play as much as they want. So that is announcement concerning family section. Also, uh, this is, there must be a lot of things in Lost and Found right now because there's a whole bunch of stuff in Lost and Found. Uh, we have many items. Uh, left behind and this isn't in my notes but if it doesn't get picked up in a week it's going on ebay anyways <laughs> august 24th back to school bash at troy middle school from 6 to 9 p.m brad are you here brad come on up let's welcome brad he is a teacher of, of really it's a ministry um at tell us what you do in troy <laughs> I know what you do, but I want you to explain it. Well, it's kind of changed a little bit. I was, uh, I'm at both schools now. Uh, I actually just teach like a kind of a computer class, but it's okay. cool I could be able to minister to really at Troy Middle and at Troy South Middle School. Oh, so wow. So it's kind of a cool opportunity. Uh, yeah, and I've been in a, a teacher for well over 20 years. Can't yeah. I think about it. I had to count. You were guess. Josh's <laughs> basketball coach in junior high, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Way back. Yeah, once again, I'm Brad Jennings. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing a back-to-school bash. Uh, that's Wednesday, August 24th at Troy Middle School from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, what we're needing from the congregation, if you feel led, is, is just a financial contribution. Whatever you feel led to do, we're trying to get better door prizes so we can kind of get kids in the door. Also, we're looking to maybe get another video game truck. Uh, I talked with the youth group in town, Troy First, Pastor Bradshaw. Seemed like they'd be interested in bringing their youth group. We contacted other group, youth groups in the area. So we're just needing just a little bit more financial aspect of things to kind of help out with those. If you feel led to do it, I'll be at the connection point after service if you want to be able to give. Um, also, I'll be there next Sunday, too. So once again, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll happy to answer them, too. Thanks again. God great. bless you. Great, great, great. Thank you, Brad. You guys, it sounds like, it sounds like you haven't had your coffee yet. Can you guys clap a little better than that? It's, We're almost at the espresso range. Come on. Uh, Bobby, do you need to tell us anything about women, moms, moms on mission? Do you need to tell us anything? Want to stand up, use your mom voice, and tell the congregation what's going on? Um, so it's just a time for moms to get together and pray for our children. It's every Wednesday night through August at 6 p.m. here at Calvary. And we just get to it's a, listen, moms. We know you're super busy. We know that life is insane when your kids are young. This could first of all be a break when your husband gets home, hand them off, and you and they can bring their kids in, can't they? If need be, then and so you bring your kids in as well. But these are women getting together for the month of August, Wednesday night, six o'clock, and they are praying for their children. 
and it's so vital that we do that. Can I get an amen? amen. Also, if you guys want your baptism certificates, uh, they can be picked up at the connection point, and that does it for announcements. Let's get the birthdays and anniversaries. If you had a birthday this last week or coming week, stand to your feet, birthday people. There you are, Ruthie. Keep her up, Mom, if you can, because there's a lot of beautiful pudge on that little girl. Anybody else, birthday people, this last week or coming week? There we go. Okay, anyone else? There. Anybody else? You're, you're pointing. Dad. Who are you pointing at? John. John, stand up. It's your birthday. Okay, so here we have one, two, wait, I lost one. One, two, where's the other one that's over here? Three, yeah, okay. Anybody's birthday today? Oh, we're over here. Anybody's birthday today? No, no, no. On three of us, wish them a happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, guys. Birthday. Happy birthday. All right, wedding anniversaries this last week or coming week. Wedding anniversaries. Yeah, yeah. You're a result of a wedding anniversary. Anybody else? On your left. On my left. Yes. 22 years. Congratulations. 22 years. Is it today? No, okay. Okay, well, congratulations, Crane. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Rick. You didn't say 25. 45, yes. Stand to your feet, Rick. 45. Cindy was 11 when they got married. And uh, so, Rick, 45. What is wrong with you guys? What, what happened? Did you guys just get all excited last week and you left it on last week? 45 years, let's give him a hand. Way to go, guys. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> you're, you're not going to get away without a kiss. You may kiss your beautiful bride. There you go. Ooh, yeah, okay. Cindy's ready. Can we have some music, please? Right, I, I, we don't know whether to go Lawrence Welk or which, yeah. <laughs> How many of you were tortured watching Lawrence Welk or your parents watched it, or your grandparents? Oh my gosh, and the one, and the two. Oh my gosh, I thought, I, I believe the Catholic doctrine of purgatory when I was watching that. Yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble, I know, I know, we're gonna get emails, I know. West at uh, Calvary <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm the head janitor here, if you're watching by the... I like that show. Oh, you do? We'll have a deliverance service after the... How about anybody else wedding anniversaries? Anyone else? Well, this morning, I, want, I would like for Mr. Judah, Mr. Aaron, Mr. Mr. Everett, and Miss Ruthie, and you bring your parents as you come up here. Because we are going to dedicate you guys to the Lord. Come on up. Come on. So the, the, the uh, we are going to have... Watch this, the full spectrum of skin color. Look at this, and look at this, the beautiful children. I knew you when you were in your mommy's tummy. Did you know that? Everett, you were in your mommy's tummy. And Ruthie, you're just so beautiful, yeah. And we've been praying for you boys. We've been praying, yeah, uh-huh, you almost got me. Almost hit the pastor. You almost hit the, you kind of like that idea, don't you? <laughs> well, we're going to pray for them one at a time, okay? And um, first, I want to start, we're going to go left to right. I want to start with Judah. Judah um, was one of the, named after one of the 12 tribes, and the word actually means to praise. So Judah, that's Judah. Judah. Now, which I asked John earlier, I thought it was Judah that liked the music. No, it's Aaron that likes the music. Okay, so Judah. We're going to pray over you. We're going to dedicate you to the Lord. Is that okay? Yeah.
Okay, so guys, let's all stand together. Father, we thank you for Judah, Lord. We thank you for the miracle of this adoption, of this redemption, of this salvation, Lord, this picture of salvation. And Father, we lift up Judah to you, Lord, asking that you would make yourself known early in his life. He would hear your voice. Father, as Americans have sent many missionaries to Uganda, may, may Judah be a missionary to America in the name of Jesus. And Father, for Aaron, Lord, may he be a mouthpiece as Aaron was for Moses. For you, Lord, may he speak for you just in a, in a beautiful, simple, prophetic way to this next generation. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to, to bless him to fill him. He would hear your voice, Lord, at a very young age. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for these two boys, for Kim and John, Lord, as they are, they are parenting these two boys. May you bless them. May, may these boys see your grace and your mercy through their lives. And Father, we just dedicate both of these boys to you in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ. We pray and everyone said together, Amen. Amen. Thank you. God, you're very welcome. And now, uh, oh, by the way, Aaron means strength. So here's what we have. We have praise. His name means praise. Aaron's name means strength. I love that. Now we're going to go to Ruthie, which means friendship. And I tell you what, sweetheart, can you come to Uncle Wes? Can you come to Uncle Wes? Hi, sweetheart. Look out. Everyone say hi to Ruthie. Can you see your mommy out there? She's not, she's not buying this. So Ruthie, it's Ruthie Joe Grace. And of course, you all know what grace means. But Ruthie means friendship. You, you young parents who are going to have children, I encourage you to pray about what you name them. You know, d don't pick a name off of a... Disney cartoon or movie, just pray about it. If the Lord leads you, fine, but pray about the name because it's so important. Father, we thank you for this beautiful little creation you've put together. Lord, Ruthie, this little one that you've known from the beginning of time, you saw her. May Ruthie be, Father, a conduit of friendship and fellowship, Lord in the kingdom of God, in this world. May you use her, Lord, to bring peace, Lord, between those who would be factious. May you just use her to bring together. We thank you for this beautiful little creation. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everyone said together, amen. amen. Now we've got Everett. Now, it do oh, you don't want to go? Okay. So Everett David Clyde. So he has three, three names. Um, I, I know what Everett means. David would be warrior. Uh, Clyde, do you know what Clyde means? Did you guys look it up? I know you did. Do you remember what it means? Okay. I should have asked you beforehand. I'm sorry. It's a family name, but it's, it's a family. river. River? River okay. in, um, yeah. Okay, we're going to go with river right now. So do you know what Everett means? Everett means brave. River, okay. Brave strength, yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. I love it. So, Everett, are you going to share your Cheerios with me? So, you want to go back to your mommy's second home? Do you think Everett will come to me? He might. No? Come here. Come here, Bubba. Come on. We're going to pray for you. You've known me since you were boy. You a good old boy. You know that? Let's see your muscles. So here's the deal. Moms, dads of young boys, don't let them be what they are created to be. They are created to be warriors. Within each little boy is a warrior. That's why they like to put on a Superman suit. That's why I like the Spider-Man. You know, this culture has done a horrible disservice trying to nullify what God has created with gender. 
Okay, so this little boy, ah, his, his name means brave. So, Father, we lift up Everett to you right now. Lord, may your spirit come upon him, Lord. May he be the good side of Samson. When he sees something wrong, may he stand up and speak out. May you use him, Lord, to, to make right things that are wrong. Bless Everett, Lord. May you speak to him. May he know your voice at a very young age. And, Father, may he be brave in this world. May he be shot as a straight arrow into this next generation. May you use him and Aaron and Judah and Ruthie. We thank you for each one of these beautiful creations. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said together. Amen. Can I, are you strong? Show me your muscles. <laughs> we can do this all day. Show me your muscles one more time. God bless you guys. God bless. Oh, you guys left already. God bless you. Oh, okay. All right, guys. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, the, the board is going to be meeting with the um, architect this week. Okay? And uh, he's, he's already getting preliminary plans. For those of you who don't know, we feel like the Lord is leading us to build a school. And the purpose of the school is simply this. Is to teach our children the truth the truth and that is not get indoctrinated to teach them to think critically to show them the evidence of scripture archaeologically I mean it's just all over the place to counter this insane world that cannot figure out any longer what a man or a woman is what have we done there'll be no confusion in this place that's the vision Here's the thing, is the Lord, the Lord has to build the house or the labor is in vain, Scripture says. And then in Zechariah it says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So at Calvary Chapel, we've always done it this way. We're just like, Lord, we sense you're telling us to do something. We're just going to take a step that way. And so would you, we're going to, in just a moment, get into friend groups and family groups. I'm going to ask you to specifically pray for, watch this creative wisdom on building this facility and the reason why i use that word is that's actually a biblical word when they were building the tabernacle and the temple god god said you bring the artists forward and and here's the basic outline but give them a spirit of creativity on what how to do things specifically how many of you guys know that god can literally through people build the house I, he can this facility was actually drawn on the back of an 8 by 11 piece of paper and we handed it to the architect and he's like oh okay so we just want the Lord to build the house the facility right now is going to be bigger than this facility right now the ar architecturally it's going to be a huge basketball court with rooms on the second level all the way around are you with me church where the kids can meet because we want to train it we want to we want to swim against the tide of this culture that has lost its mind would you pray for that then would you ask God to speak to you this morning speak to you specifically because Jesus said my sheep hear my what and they follow me so that's what we want to do let's all stand get your family groups your friend groups and pray for the school creative wisdom and then also ask God to speak to you this morning
darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. The shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand Stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Let's sing that again. My fear doesn't stand a chance. Oh, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand. I don't want to move past that point yet. I think sometimes we need to sing some things until we truly believe them in our heart. We know there's no fear in the Lord, amen. 
whatever situation we're facing, be it relationships or physical, whatever's going on, if it's sickness, if it's financial, there's no room for fear in his love, amen? Let's declare that this morning. Let's declare my fear doesn't stand a chance. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. One more time, let's sing it. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Not a chance, amen. like a river wash over me burst me in water as deep as the sea hide me in love your healing embrace like a river wash over me as I worship your majesty I worship your holy name Jesus my everything all that I am
up in the heavens and fling wide the gates flood every heart with mercy and pour out your presence and inhabit our praise as we cry holy holy open the heavens and fling wide the gates flood every heart with mercy pour out your presence inhabit our praise as we cry holy holy open the heavens says, Lord, send revival. Would you send it now? A move of your spirit will heaven break out. Oh 
God, let that be the cry of our heart today. Let us be a people that are consumed with seeing your kingdom come to this earth, Father God. Willing to sacrifice whatever it takes to see it so. God, for what great love and mercy you've shown to us. Let it be our desire that everyone knows that, Father God. Father, I'm so thankful for this time we've had in worship. To lift our voice together in unity, exalting you in this place. And now, Father God, as we dive into your word, I thank you that we are cleansed by it. I pray that you bless Pastor Wes, that every word he speaks, Father God, he hears you say to speak, and he's faithful to say it. God, we're faithful to receive it. I love you, Lord, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big old hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11, as you can see on the overhead. If you do not have a Bible, we have one for you. You want to have a Bible, you want to be looking through God's Word as we're reading it, because the Holy Spirit can speak to you, you know, totally apart from the, whoever's speaking. So if you don't have a Bible, uh, lift up your hand and we will get one to you. And again, they're marked. Uh, for you, so we made it a little easier for you. And um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. To one, verse 8, is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the Spirit to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. We finally read in verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Father, I ask you now to take complete control just of our hearts, of the atmosphere here. Father, I pray against any distractions or disruptions that would keep us from hearing from you. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come alongside of us and teach us. Jesus, we ask you to speak to your sheep now. We are here. We are expectant. We want to learn. We want to be taught by our shepherd. So, Jesus, we invite you into this place. We ask, Father, that in Troy and in Lincoln County, we know there's one church. There are many congregations, but there's one church. May your church and each congregation rise up. May you pour your spirit out upon us. And it is the name of our resurrected King Jesus, we pray. And everyone said together, amen. amen. We are doing a series. Don't be ignorant. And, and I know in the Midwest, that word ignorant is kind of a 
kind of a um, pejorative. Don't be ignorant. Well, Paul, the Apostle Paul says specifically there are three things I want you to know that each Christian must know. And the first one is he says, don't be ignorant of spiritual gifts. And then the second one is, don't be ignorant of how Israel is, is being, how the nation of Israel is being used in the whole scene, the landscape of prophecy. And then the third one is, don't be ignorant. We Christians aren't ignorant of how, how the demonic realm works against the believer. And yet, I think if you look at the landscape of the American church, those are the three things we're probably the most ignorant about. Israel and prophecy, the spiritual gifts, and how Satan works. So we're on our second message in a a series of six, second message on spiritual gifts. What are spiritual gifts? Now, Christians, listen to me, please. I want to say this, and I'm, I'm going to talk to myself and let you listen in. Do we have a deal? We can tend to want to compartmentalize God in our lives. We, we may say, I'm a follower after Jesus, but we're not willing to give him everything. The fact of the matter he's, is, is he's God. He deserves everything. He's created everything that I am, every part of who I am, body, mind, and spirit. Listen, he created me. He deserves no less than every part of who I am. So as a follower after Jesus Christ, my mantra, if you will, is Lord. If I don't give it over to you, just break me down and take it. Because I want your will to be done in my life, not my will. When you look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the lesson we learn there is that Jesus, the man man part of him, the human part of him did not want to drink from this cup. Are, we, are you with me in this scene? Didn't want to drink because he realized he's drinking the wrath of God for you and me. He's drinking that cup of wrath. And if you look in the book of Revelations, there's seven bowls or cups that are poured out during the tribulation period. And when you parallel all of those bowls of wrath poured out on mankind, they each parallel what Jesus Christ went through on the cross. Open sores. Thirst. So Jesus in the garden, Gethsemane says, Father, if there's any other way for this to happen, please let it be so. Please. Because I see what's going to happen. And then there's a pause and there's no answer from heaven. Then Jesus says, nevertheless, Lord, not as I will, but your will. The disciple of Jesus Christ, that must be our prayer. Lord, I'm going to trust you no matter what. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. We are coming into a time in history where things are going to radically change in America so fast it's going to make your head spin. I believe within the next five years they're going to start arresting pastors. Study your history, folks. We keep making the same cycles of history, same things. When that cancel culture started, I thought, there it comes, it's coming. So my point in saying that is not to frighten you, but to prepare you. The church actually has always done well in persecution. Never done well in prosperity. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The church has never done well in prosperity. If you read the seven churches that Jesus wrote in the book of Revelation, he rebuked every church but two. And we looked at this a few weeks ago, but one, one of the churches says, we're rich, we have need of nothing. We're good. And Jesus said, but I see, what I see is you're naked, poor, you're, you're, you're You don't see what I see. And then the church that had the reputation of being poor, Jesus says, I'm looking at you. You have the reputation of being poor, but you are rich. We got to jettison this idea that Christianity and prosperity and things are biblical. So I want to give everything I am over to the Lord. And I got to do it continually. 
And he's so patient, he's so long-suffering, he's so kind. He's a lot nicer to me than I am to myself. So you have this kind of interesting dichotomy. You have this call to just follow Jesus Christ and, and, and I'm to give my life to him. And my, boy, that sounds kind of hard, and I understand that. And, 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 then, and then God's holiness and his righteousness. And, 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 but then on this other side, you have grace. This grace that's, that I, you can't even begin to comprehend. You can't even begin to fathom. If you knew how much God loves you, it would blow your mind. I was talking to a young father who just had a little, little child. I don't want to embarrass Josh Pease because I don't want to mention, embarrass him, but he's back there with his little boy. And I said, so what happened when your child was born? He said, I'm like, I know, I've been there. Tears, I, I understand that. Do you know why I believe God created families and moms and dads and, and, and gave us, created this idea of, of creating these beautiful creations of these babies of God so that when that baby comes out, God is going to tell you, now you understand how I feel about you. I love you. When my firstborn son was born, my heart jumped out of my chest and landed right on him. And then I thought, there's no way I could love it like this again. Then my second born, third born, fourth born, same thing. Heart, boom, boom. That's how much God loves you. I want to tell you two quick stories. Then I'm going to wrap it up with the point that we're going to get in Scripture. As most of you know, I worked for Voice of the Martyrs for many years. And there was a brother, um, um, a Mennonite brother. David Bontrager, that's a Mennonite name for you. And he was known as Das Hat in the Eastern Bloc because he wore the Mennonite hat. And he used to smuggle in Bibles to the Eastern Bloc. Boy, talk about not going incognito, showing up as a Mennonite. But he had stories that would just curl your hair about how God got these Bibles in. But he was telling me a story one time. He said, we were loading a dock one time, and there's a young Mennonite teenager, and he got stuck between the truck and the dock, and they didn't know it, and crushed him. So we knew he had minutes to live. And David said, I ran over, and I, I forgot the young man's name. He said, oh, brother, oh, brother, are you okay? And this young man says, do you see him? Do you see him? He's coming for me. Who? Jesus. Do you see him, brother? David, do you see him? He's coming for me. Do you see him? That's the real reality. Another story, we're in Tracy, California, and Trish and I are first married, and there's a young couple there who had a little girl who had cancer, and she had had, had one of her arms amputated because of his bone cancer, and, and they knew there was coming towards the end, and they were laying in bed, and she was 11 years old. And she sat up in her bed and looked at the end of the bed and said, is it time? Is it time, Jesus? She laid back down and went with the one that was standing at the end of her bed. That's the real reality. Are you with me, church? So we have all these things in front of us. We want to finish this race well. We want to know what God has called us to do. We want to free ourselves from any fear. We want to free ourselves from any fear of what man might think of us. Because in the end, who cares what men think of you? We serve an audience of one. Amen. We serve an audience of one. So we don't care. Fear is a snare. Fear is a trap. So we want to run this race well. So when it comes to not being ignorant about things, hey, 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 let's learn. So it says here in verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know what? I, because I got so far off my notes, I forgot I need to do this. We're talking about, <laughs> okay, let me set the theme. <laughs> Apart from the other th three themes I've set. Anyways, here's the theme. When it comes to the gifts of God, 
The whole issue is God speaking to you. When it comes to gifts of the Spirit, it's God speaking to you individually. Okay? And when we look at the history, if I draw your attention to the overhead, look to the history of God speaking to us, I want to start here. You are with the book of Revelation. There's all these incredible angels and beings around God's throne. He says, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things, and by your will they were created. So you and I were created by God by his will. And that word, his will, in the Greek means his pleasure. So now, now note this. When God created you, it was for his pleasure and was according to his will. So here's the deal. He wants you. He wants to save you. That's, his, that's, that's God's heart. You, he's been, you've been created for him. But on the flip side of that, the reason why we've been created, Jesus tells us in John, 4, uh, John 17, when it's at, known as a high priestly prayer, it's an incredible, you guys gotta read John 17, it's amazing. Because here's what he said, Father, as you and I are one, May they be one with us as well. So he's saying the same relationship, Father, that I have with you is the type of relationship I want your disciples, your followers to have with you. Do you think Jesus and God the Father are pretty tight? Yeah, Trinity, hello? But he says, Father, may they experience your love in just an incredible way. But then he says this, this is eternal life that they may know you. Okay, so we were created for his pleasure and his will. We were created to know God. That's it. So if you have a heart that says, God, I want to know you, he will begin to take you on a journey of revealing himself to you. He will. Now, if there's a lot of icebergs, he needs to move out of our way, right? I mean, in my life, I've been to Titanic, oh, about a thousand times run into that iceberg, and I'm drowning. The Lord's like, well, this next time, listen to me, and I'll show you how to avoid the iceberg. Am I aging myself now by talking about the Titanic? Anyways, for by thy will. So you were created. So now watch this. We go to Moses in Exodus, and watch, this is God speaking to Moses, and folks, these things, although they were written for Moses and they actually happened with Moses, there are things that you and I can pull, these spiritual principles we can pull. So God's speaking to him, he says, now I will turn aside and see this great sight, why a bush does not burn. So God appears to Moses, the burning bush, right? The bush is burning, but it's not being consumed. What? That'd be pretty interesting to watch. And it catches Moses' attention. And so what God is telling us here, just by way of metaphor, is that I am a consuming fire, but I'll watch this. I'm only going to consume those things that aren't righteous. So he's, 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 he's a fire. And when we come to Christ, because Jesus made the sacrifice for you and I, we step, if you will, through the fire and God consumes all of our sin. He does away with it. So this is burning fire. And, and Moses is caught by this. And he goes, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses responds. And he said, here I am. Okay. Does God know your name? He knew Moses' name. Does he know your name? He absolutely knows your name. He knows your name. He knows everything about you. And not only that, in the book of Revelation, it says you're going to get a new name. And he's going to, it's going to be a secret between you and God. You get a new name in heaven. So if you don't like your name now, you get a new one. And it's going to be awesome. Now watch this. He said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy. Interesting. Why did he have Moses take his sandals off his feet? Now, I went back into all the Jewish writings on this, 
Christian writings. I'm sitting there going, Lord, what is going on here? And, and then paralleling it to other scripture. Because you remember Joshua? Remember when the captain of the host appeared to Joshua? Do you remember this at the Jericho? Jer- Jericho, are you with me, church? Yeah. Okay, and interesting enough, as I was pondering this, what, but just before the wall fell down, just before the collapse of the stronghold, what did they have Israel do? They're marching around seven times, and what did they do? Shout. Oh, trumpets and shout. Trumpet and shout. Where do you hear trumpet and shout again? Yeah. We have a commentator over here. She's awesome. <laughs> if you didn't hear in the back, the rapture. There's going to be a trumpet of the archangel and a shout. Uh, I'm sorry, the trumpet of the Lord and a shout of the archangel. It's just really interesting parallels. But so Joshua, Joshua is standing there, and this, this captain of, appears, an angel. He says, are you with us or against us? He says, no. I'm not neither for you or against you, but I'm going to show you what to do. You're going to go into my plan, is what Jesus, and this, I think, is a Christophany, a pre-appearance of Jesus. But he tells Joshua to take off his sandals. Do you guys remember that? You are on holy ground. Take off your sandals. Well, so I'm going through all this stuff, all this cultural stuff. What is it? Okay, so even in Missouri, when we first moved here, you, you go visit people. And in California, you didn't, you didn't do this. But in Missouri, you take off your shoes, right? You don't want to track what in? Dirt. It's the same idea, the Hebrew, Hebrew mindset. But God said, this is holy ground. Take your shoes off. And as I was reading through the Hebrew history of this idea, it's an, also an idea of vulnerability. I'm coming and I'm taking my shoes off. I just can't turn and run right now. I'm barefoot. It's also an idea of respect, but it's also an idea of God calling you to a different direction. You have your sandals, you've been going a certain way, take them off. Because now I'm calling you to do something. Something completely different. And I believe wholeheartedly, you, when God speaks your name, and he speaks to every one of us, the issue is, are we listening? He has something he wants you to do. You're saved, you're his child, you're his son, you're his daughter. But I believe wholeheartedly, each one of us, if you will, has a burning bush Experience where God says, Mary, John, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. Pay attention. I've got a calling on your life to do something, and I want you to do this. You're going to be going in a a direction maybe you're not aware of right now. Now, he'll show it to you primarily what? Through his word, logos, his written word. Are you with me, church? But there's also another word for word in the Bible. You guys know this. We've been over it many times, Rhema which God gives specific instruction to you to go do something. And the rhema word has also always got to be filtered through logos. So you, you, you can't contradict logos, God's written word, with a rhema word that you've gotten and say, oh, God told me to do this. God told me to rob a bank. I know that's fallacious, but God told me, no, he didn't. He doesn't go through God's word, but God will speak to you. He'll speak to you. And he wants, he wants us to know him, so he'll speak and he'll guide you and, and he'll back this up. When you take a step, God says, do this, you take a step out, and then God says, oh, you're like, okay, I gotcha. And he might not tell you what the end game is, but he'll say, take another step this way, take another step this way, and I will show you what I want you to do. And as you go along the way, I'll speak to your, your heart on what to do. Folks, remember those two people that stepped into eternity, the the story I just shared with you. When my time comes, when Jesus shows up for me and he says, Wes, it's time, I want to look back on my life and go, Lord, I listened. You spoke to me. I don't want that moment to be, darn it. That's a Christian swear word. Why didn't I listen? So this is commissioning going on. And I absolutely believe Jesus calls you, you're saved, and he commissions you to do specific things. And 1 Kings 19.10, you guys know the story. This is Elijah. 
So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts, for the children of Israel have, for, uh, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. This is his cave experience. You remember Jezebel is after him, wants him dead. He has just previously, this verse said, God, kill me. Suicide. Take me. God, take me home. I want to die. So anyone in ministry, you will get to a point where you just feel so wiped out, so, so like, Lord, just take me home. Have you guys ever watched the news and gone, Lord, just take us home? I alone am left. He felt alone. He felt isolated. Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Still small voice in the Hebrew means quiet, a whisper. So what God is saying is, listen, I'm not going to be in the Steven Spielberg mode of getting your attention. I'm going to be in the still small voice mode. I'm going to speak to your heart. I'm going to whisper to your heart. Now that's a lot more intimate, you whispering to someone than yelling at them, right? Right? When you're with your spouse, you whisper. You whisper, you're beautiful, right? You men better be doing that. You're the prettiest woman on the face of the earth. The older you're getting, the more Baywatch looking you are. <laughs> I've never watched Baywatch, ever, but they filmed it where I grew up. Yeah, yeah. point that no one cares about. Anyways, so um, first Kings here. Now we go to God speaking. Watch this. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. This is an incredible promise. Incredible. No one's going to snatch them out of my hand. First of all, we love that. But my sheep, what? Here. My sheep, what? That means you're listening for them. You're listening for them. You know, if you talk to a believer who's disobedient all the time to the Lord... They're like, I, I don't hear his voice. Well, he, he speaks, but watch what happens. Because uh, I've done this before. I've done this. I don't want to hear that. I want to go my own way. And what happened is, after a while, I'm no longer sensitive to hearing that still small voice because now my heart is hardened because I went and did what I wanted to do. So then I have to repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I confess my sin, and, and then I begin to hear his voice again. But we've got to be sure we don't have anything between us and the Lord, any sin that would keep him from hearing, whether it's pride, greed, anger, lust, whatever it might be, keeping us from hearing from the Lord. Unforgiveness is the number one big thing. God will keep you from hearing your shepherd's voice. So, my sheep hear, that is, they're listening. They know my voice, and they follow me. Now, my encouragement to you right now is, can you relate to this? I'm not asking you to say yes or no, but can you relate to this? Do, when he speaks, do, do, do you listen? Um, I'm at the age right now where it's a lot easier to witness to people because I got gray and I'm gray. It's much easier. I found when I was younger, when I was younger, I'd go up and start witnessing to people like, who are you? I walk up now and I'm the happy grandpa. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you guys. They're, they're just open. Three Muslim guys in front of Starbucks down in Dallas. Those poor guys didn't know it was coming. They're speaking Arabic. I come by, hey, what country are you from? And then this, it means, because I'm older than them, and they, they respect elders in their culture. They mean, we had, oh, we're from a country that was named after the greatest American movie ever, ever. I'm like, 13 hours in Benghazi? Some of you will get that. Some of you won't. <laughs> he goes, no, not Libya. Casablanca. I'm like, oh, Morocco, okay, gotcha. 
Well, let me tell you a story. You guys remember the story I told the guy, the Muslim guy in in Tebe? Let me tell you a story about my sister. She's a doctor, and uh, Candy got lodged in my five-year-old, and she passed out, and she turned him over and said, Jesus, help! Hit, and that Christmas candy broke in half and came out, and they're all listening. So I said, hey, listen, when you're in trouble, call upon Jesus. And they're like, they were really appreciative. Muslims, when you get them alone, are appreciative if you pray for them and you show them love. Listen, I get it that a large majority of the Muslim population, like 350 million of them, believe in jihad and want to take over America, and they want to destroy, and they want to kill the infidel. I understand that. By the way, that's the population of America. Oh, you're Islamophobic. Please. I'm just telling you what they tell me. But that's Islamophobia. Oh, yeah, well, just Islamophobia your way through life. Then one day they'll take your head off. I didn't say that. So, so I'm sharing that, and they're like, one, one of the guys was really locked in. He goes, man, thank, thank you, thank you. Then on my flight home, I feel so sorry for people who have to sit next to me. Two Hasidic Jews. I'm like, I hit the jackpot. I just hit the jackpot. Lord, may you delay this flight. They come in, you know, they got the, 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 the yarmulke on and the, and the prayer things, and there's a husband and wife, and they come in, they sit down, and I'm just going, oh, 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 oh. the plane takes off, I'm like, oh, oh. So, can I ask you a few questions? Sure. How do you know when the Messiah is going to come? Ooh. Well, I know what their answer is. They said, my rabbi is going to, our rabbi will tell us. I said, what if he's wrong? Then I began to tell them about Joseph. Joseph, do you believe Joseph was a foreshadowing of the Messiah? These poor people. You know how Abraham, beloved son, three-day journey to Mount Moriah. Joe, uh, Isaac carried the instrument was on his back of wood, and then, then he, was, he, was, he was tied to the wood, and then the father raised his hand and 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 an angel of the Lord appeared and a ram caught in the thicket. You guys know this story. So he's listening to this whole thing and he knows the scriptures. I go, do you think that's a foreshadowing of the Messiah? He goes, well, yeah. Oh, at Mount Moriah where God's going to later provide? Oh, was he, was Joseph a, a, a suffering servant? And we went into Jacob, and jo- the whole thing, and then went to Psalm 22. Now, we're chatting back and forth. I'm not just doing this. <laughs> because when you witness to someone, you've got to listen. So we chatted the whole time there, and I stopped and I listened. I'm asking questions. Number one, I am sincerely curious. I am sincerely curious. But then I'm waiting to throw the seed. Read Psalm 20, just before we left. Read Psalm 22. It talks about a crucifixion. You guys know that Psalm starts out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My hands, my feet are pierced. My tongue is as a potsherd. They cast lots for my, for my clothing. I said, that was written 400 years before the Assyrians invented crucifixion. You know, when Daniel talks about when the Messiah comes, he will be cut down, but not for himself. That word in the Hebrew, and now he's going like this, that word in the Hebrew means to be murdered. So the Messiah would be murdered. And then at the very end, I told him the story about my sister. And the, Jesus help me. I said, call upon him. God has a mission for you, not like that, maybe. Maybe he won't be flying so much that these people are trapped next to you. Maybe you won't be walking out in front of Starbucks and you, you recognize Northern African Arabic. Maybe that's not you, but you have a calling somewhere. It might not even be evangelism. But my sheep hear my voice. So verses 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I want you to know this stuff. You know that you were carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you, verse 3, that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And verse 2, we talked about this two weeks ago. He talk, He says, when you were Gentiles, when you were unbelievers, you were carried away by idols that couldn't speak. They couldn't speak to you. 
We say money speaks. Really, it doesn't. Money just is equals power. But, but all these different idols, he said, Paul's saying, they didn't speak to you. But now watch, God does speak because he's a living God. Verse 4, there are diversities of gifts or tools that God has given the church, but the same spirit. These are, there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, verse 6, but as the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation, look in verse 7, of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now watch this. When we go into these gifts of the Spirit, what he's saying is this. All of them come from God. It's the same Spirit. So what should the message be to you and I? You and I are one. So when these gifts are used properly, they're to bring us together, not separate us. We have have factions in the church of Jesus Christ that say, and I think unscripturally so, I don't think unscripturally, I think I can make a good argument, that if you don't have a particular gift of the Spirit, you don't have the Holy Spirit. What? Where's that written? It's not, it's not there. Do you guys know what gift I'm talking about? Okay. It's it's not there. It's not in Scripture. Let's look at Scripture. I don't care what your people tell you. I don't care what your leaders tell you. I don't care what my leaders or my mentors told me. Is it in Scripture or not? But all these things are here to bring us together. So it's why he talks about the prophet of all. is to bring together. Now, knowing that... That God's desire is that the church come together under the banner of our resurrected King, Jesus Christ. If I'm the enemy of this world and and I'm the enemy of the church, I'm going to do everything I can to work against that oneness. That church coming together. Folks, I'm not tooting my horn. If I am, the Lord will deal with me but I want to share a perspective with you. For 32 years, I've been trying to get pastors together in Lincoln County. We've been here since 1989. And immediately when we started Calvary Chapel, I would I'd call other guys and say, hey, can we get together and pray? And the answer was always no. I'm busy. Or I'm, I'm like, what? We even showed up at one pastor's place I had an appointment for, and I verified the week before and I showed up, and the secretary told me, oh, they left for St. Charles. I said, did they remember we had a meeting to get together and pray? Oh, yeah. So you know what the Lord's doing now? He's raised up a new crop of leaders. And we're going to have this outreach, which we'll be talking about on the 14th of September. And there are now nine other churches involved. And it's the young guys God's raised up to kind of replace the old guard. I'm like, yes, Lord, yes. Now, let me say this as a caveat. We don't gather around just to gather around. We come into fellowship around what is true, and Jesus Christ is true. Are you with me? So when you talk about Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, people who deny that Jesus Christ is the only way, I'm not going to gather around with them. Are you with me, church? It's gathering around the truth of who Jesus Christ is. But now there's nine churches. I'm like, I love this, Lord. Way to go. Last year, we only had four churches. So I'm just like, Lord, you are so good. May you bring your church together as one. So that's God's heart. And then watch this. He says here, verse 8, for one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Now notice he always says through the Spirit. To another, word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gift of healings by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. Verse 11. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each individually as he wills. Your attention, please, to the overhead. Guys, God has gifted you with one or more of these gifts. Because he clearly says in the scripture, I've gifted all, every one, for the benefit of all. You might say, well, wait a minute. I don't feel qualified. (sighs) Who is qualified? Who's qualified? No, we're just available to the Lord. We want to be faithful to the Lord. We want to be teachable. Yeah, but I didn't go to seminary. Good. God, that's wonderful. 
good. Let's go over some gifts here. Wisdom. It's the feminine Greek word Sophia. It means to give wise advice. Now, we all get, have gotten wise advice from non-Christians. Christians can, can give wise advice, right? The answer is yes. Because you live this life long enough, you, you can pour... What they can't give you is wisdom from the Holy Spirit. And that's what Paul is saying here. This comes from God himself. So it's wisdom that comes from him. might be the same words, but it won't have the same power. And this is, this is really an important gift in the church. So you don't know what to do or when to do it. You know, Proverbs says, seek out wise counsel. You seek out wise counsel, and this is what I do, and I encourage you, I'm sure many of you do the same thing, but if I'm kind of stuck, I don't know which way to go, I'll just call up, I'll ask my wife first, and then I'll call up some godly elders, godly men that I know, and I'll say, what do you think about this? And I just kind of wait, and I can always kind of tell, at least I think I can, discern when the Holy Spirit's speaking. Because it goes in, and you're like, yes. It's like you're trying to do a, a square peg in a round hole, then all of a sudden it turns around and whoosh, yes, that's it. Are you guys with me? Yeah. It's just like, no, that, that's confirming in my heart that yes, that's from the Lord. The second one is knowledge, which is knowing something that comes from God. Not just knowing something, but it's a knowledge that only God could have given you, if you will, insight into. And do you remember when Jesus said, my sheep hear my what? So when you're a stuck and you ask for guidance, he'll speak to you. And he might speak through someone else. Word of wisdom, to give wise advice from God. Knowledge, something that comes from God. Folks, that's why fellowship with other Christians is so important. It's like when you ladies meet on Wednesday nights, when my band of brothers meets, or when my mighty men of, young mighty men of God meet, when we're fellowshipping, we are expecting God to speak wisdom, to speak knowledge to us. And then the, the next gift is faith, which literally means a state of certainty. Have you been in your life when God has asked you to do something, you're stepping out, and you just, it's just like, gosh, this is a piece of cake. I just have total peace about this. This is, like, this is, this is God. That's a gift. Healings to cure or make whole physically and mentally. So God has commissioned us, you and me, we have power over demons. This is what he told his 70 disciples, and we're, we fit in the same category because we belong to the church of Jesus Christ. He sent them out, the 70 out. He said, I, I've given you power to heal the sick. So he's given you power to go and pray for the sick. Hello? And then to cast out demons. He's given you total power over the demonic realm. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now we're going to see a lot more manifestations of the demonic realm in America as time goes by. We had an encounter with a person, me and the elders, who manifested three demons. Three different personalities, three different demons. And you might go, gosh, that sounds strange. Read your Bible. It's not strange. It's reality. Different personalities. There, that's it. Were you afraid? Not, not, a, not a bit. Because when ministry happens, God shows up. There's nothing to fear. Nothing. In fact, I was getting a little mad which is not good because I was thinking to myself, you demons tormented me as a kid. Now I'm going to do everything I can to be the best pastor I can, to raise up strong sheep who multiply, to invade your kingdom and take it back. And by the way, we're coming back one day on horses and I want the biggest sword. I want my Australian shepherds next to me and my two sons who are warriors, Micah and Josh, and Jacob, who's in heaven right now. I want my boys next to me, because they are warriors. And we're going to come back, 
And there's going to be payback time. Because as a kid, I was tormented. Absolutely tormented. The first sun Sunday in September, we're going to have a man here who I spent four or five hours with. He's written a best-selling book called When the Pigs Get In. Most balanced ministry of deliverance. And I don't like that word deliverance because it's been so misused. And there's so many deliverance ministries that are so scripturally amok. It's the most balanced that I've ever seen. I shared this with you guys, I think, two or three weeks ago. He's going to be here. He's going to share with us about how it is um, we as Christians can deal with the demonic realm. So there's two kind of things I feel like the Lord is opening the doors for and, and share this with the elders and we're all in agreement. Two ministries that are kind of um, he's opening doors for and that's, that's to deliver help de to deliver rather Christians who are being tormented because there's Christians who are being tormented. They come to the Lord, they love the Lord, they're saved. But they still struggle horribly with things, thoughts they don't want, fear they don't want. And I'll give them a scripture and I'll counsel with them, but they're still struggling. And then the school, educate young men, young, young people. So healing is a part of that. I sat in a room as the woman who had some ailments beautiful, godly, just precious daughter of the Most High God, and, and some doors were open when they were young. I'm going to speak they now. I shouldn't have said she, because she was horribly beaten and molested, and those can be open doors for demons to come in. It's not fair, but it's the way it is. And I watched as this person took her through these wonderful, wonderful steps, and she was free, tears streaming down her face. She said, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. Who doesn't want to be free? It was like a worship service, like the Holy Spirit was there. I was like, whoa, I want to get on my knees and, and just thank you, Lord. By the gift of healing, but we're commanded to pray for the sick. You and I are. Just like, you know how you pray for the sick? Father, we ask you to heal this person. We ask you, Lord, to heal this person. It's as simple as that. You can do that. Okay, healings. Next one is miracles, and that's dunamis, mighty works. So, so, so the things the Lord wants to do through you is one of the gifts that, whoa, the Lord just kind of seems to go work through that person. That's miracles. The next one is prophecy. That's utterances from God. You remember when Joel said, I'll pour out my spirit, and your young men, or your old men shall dream dreams, your young men and, and daughters shall prophesy. They're going to speak for God. Things that come out of their mouth are going to be supernaturally natural. It's not like they're going to sit there and begin to shake and go, I got a word from God. And we, we've, we have made this by Christian, I don't even know what, production, We've made this to be like the super, it's got to, you got to be doing this, or you got to be, uh, you got to, no, God speaks through us supernaturally, naturally. He wants to speak through you if you're in a difficult situation, or your friend's in a difficult situation. God might have word of knowledge, a word of, of wisdom, or a prophetic thing coming through. He wants to do it. And you know what the crazy thing about it? I'll bet you he's done this through you, and you didn't even know it. I was expecting a round of applause with that, but that's all right. I just, I just. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Prophecy, discernment of spirit, seeing what others may not see. This is a great gift to have. You come into a situation, and everyone's like, oh, and we've had this happen here, and everyone's like, oh, this, this is very impressive. You come in a situation, you go, no. Something's wrong. Something's wrong here. You discern what's behind the situation. You discern something that others at that time don't see. Great gift to have, discernment of spirit. Sometimes you keep quiet about it and just wait and watch. Sometimes you should take action on it. Tongues, this is one that gets 
everyone wiped out. The funny thing about that is this was wiping out the church 2,000 years ago. <laughs> it was misused. People who spoke in tongues wore it as a badge of spiritual maturity. And that's why Paul in Corinthians goes, listen, if you have the gift of tongues, fine. But if you don't love, you might as well take two trash cans and do this. Ding, 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 ding. Because that's all it is before the Lord. So what tongues is, is a Greek word is glossa, means a language not naturally acquired or unknown. So it's bypassing your mind, and we Westerners have a real hard time with that. It bypasses your mind, and you're speaking in a language that you don't know. Some people call it the heavenly language, some it whatever, but it is from the Spirit, and you're praying. Now, I have the gift of tongues, but I never do it publicly. It's, it's an intimacy between me and the Lord, and I'm not any more mature than you because I have the gift of tongues. Can we agree on that? We should put that aside. I'm not more special. But I have found it really helpful one time. In fact, in, yes, in, in, guys, you got your Bibles. Turn left in your Bibles to Romans 8. Romans 8, uh, verse 26. I'm going to tell you a st true story here. Romans 8, verse 26. It says, likewise, you just left, um, I think it's just one book, isn't it? Yeah. Um, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Okay, so we're weak. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So that word groanings means literally what an um, it's kind of an exhale. But what he's saying here is that the Holy Spirit even helps us to pray. So 20 plus years ago when, the, when Calvary Chapel was still on um, West Cherry Street, I was driving to church and speaking in tongues and immediately an interpretation comes. And it was an odd interpretation. I was praying against disruptions in the service. And it came to me, just clear, like I'm speaking in tongues and then ticker tape me the interpretation. I'm like, okay. Second service, we had a visitor who interrupted the service three times. Never had happened before, hasn't happened since. Later that afternoon, they stood up and he asked a question. I said, sir, I'd be happy to answer your question. Some of you may have been there. Sir, I'm going to be happy to answer your question. Now is not the time. I'll meet you after the service. I'd be happy to answer your question. He interrupted again. Boy, I saw the sheep. They, they were like, Rrr. I mean, have you ever seen sheep get nasty? Rrr. I'm like, it's okay, guys. It's okay. With, they, 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 were, they were protecting me. I mean, I, I was acting... I mean, the Lord came upon me with his incredible grace and peace because normally I'd be sit down and shut up. No, I wouldn't do that. But anyways, just, just, I was just, and they're all like going, stop it. And, and, and anyways, later that afternoon, it's like the Lord taps me on the shoulder and he goes, remember this morning? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, then I'm slow, okay? I'm, I'm slow. And the angels in heaven were going, yeah, he's slow. But I'm, I'm just like, so, so very interesting, very interesting. So the last one is interpretation of tongues, interpreting so others can say amen. Now, I'm just going to give you this very quickly. Scripture gives us very detailed instructions on how to use tongues in a service. Three or more at the most. And if there, isn't an, if there is not an interpretation, sit down and be quiet. It's really simple. So when I was speaking in hundreds of churches when I was with Voice of the Martyrs, and every, the pastor would say, all right, everybody, everybody up and speak in tongues. La, 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 And you, when, what Paul said in Corinthians was, if you all speak in tongues, won't the unlearned come in and say you're nuts? And I'm sitting there going, ooh, that scripture could be applied right now. It's very clear in scripture, very clear. So if someone stands up and starts uttering a tongue, I'm going to wait. No interpretation. Thank you. Have a seat. Three at the most. 
But then Paul says, I would rather that you prophesy so that all are encouraged. Because prophecy comes from the Lord and the prophecy literally builds up and encourages or it can correct. So we can have a corrective word come forth. We can have an encouraging word come forth. So Paul says, listen, I speak in tongues more than all of you do. But I would much rather when you gather together that you prophesy to one another. Can we get to get that script, scripturally correct? Tell you what, you stick with scripture, you're going to be fine. Back in, let's wrap this up. Back in Corinthians 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being made are one body, so also is Christ. Gifts, folks, we don't want to be ignorant about it. Okay? So we've, we've covered gifts. We don't want to be ignorant. Gifts are given for the building up of the body to bring us together. No one has a gift that's supposed to be spotlighted. No one is supposed to have a gift where you're supposed to look at and go, that person is special. No. No. And that's what we've done in the American church. We spotlighted some people who have gifts, and we're spotlighting them, and the Lord Jesus is going, no. It was meant to bring the whole body together. All of you have been given gifts. So as we go forward as a congregation, you know, I look five years down the line, I'm like, Lord, may each person here this morning, may you show them their gift, may they use their gift to further your kingdom. May you bring your body of Jesus Christ and Lincoln County together. And may there be such a large harvest that will be calling out for workers of the harvest. Amen? Let's stand up, folks. Nick, come on up. So I'm going to ask Nick just to play really softly some guitar music. And we're going to go ahead and keep the lights on for right now. Thank you. Guys, your Lord Jesus, your Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, has given you gifts to use. Now, for some of you, he's been speaking to you about what those are. And some of you, he's even given instruction on what you need to do. Maybe go to a loved one. Maybe go to a friend who you've had a falling out with. Maybe, maybe to go pray for someone specifically. Maybe a word of knowledge. Maybe a word of wisdom. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's for somebody else. Maybe it's an utterance of God the Lord has put on your heart. And for some of you, it's just going to be a matter of just hearing his voice. How do you hear his voice, you might ask? You know what? You ask him, Jesus, I want to hear your voice. I tell you what, he's not going to force himself into your life. He's not going to force himself into your will. Just ask him to speak to you. Just do it. Don't compartmentalize Sundays where you, you've checked the box and you walk out. Don't do that. This is your life. So just right now between you and the Lord, just ask him to speak to you, to show you. He will. Then I would really encourage you to get into God's word, Gospel of John. Start reading the Gospel of John because he speaks to you directly through that through his word and as you get more familiar with logos God's word the bible you'll hear his voice he'll also be able to distinguish between your shepherd's voice and an enemy's voice
So who's here right now? And I'm going to ask you to use your outdoor voice. Who feels like the Lord's impressing something upon their hearts? Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy. And you sense the Lord wants you to speak it out. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to do so here. So it's just an attitude of worship. You don't need to close your eyes. You don't, you, you, the Lord is here right now. We just want, if he wants to say something to us through these gifts, we're, we want to hear it. So if you sense that, I'm going to ask you not to wait, just to speak up. Just do it now. God, I'm just praying for this community right now. Yes. Lincoln County, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you just open doors for us to go out and just preach your word, Lord. Give us boldness. Give us just the light of your life, Lord. Just help us just to reach those who are confused. Yes. We just need, need you. Lord, I pray that any anxieties and fears. Stress, Lord, that, that anybody in here is just is under right now. Please just be with them. Draw yes. near to them. Lord, we all need you so much. Yes. And, uh, I just give, give it all to you, Lord. Mm-hmm. You're the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Anybody else? Your heart's just overflowing. Actually, it is very powerful. However, that is the first time I've heard a word, word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit that used a double whammy, but that's, but that's okay. <laughs> that's a great word. Anybody else? Two words, um, healing and restoration. Mm. Just to be at the least open up the foundation, healing and restoration. Healing and restoration. Amen. One more. Well, what more fitting thing to do than sing the song, We Praise You As We Go Out, amen? He all ready?
Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. God bless you guys. Give a high five to someone next to you in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can hang out and fellowship if you'd like. If you don't want to, that's okay too. How are you? <laughs>